Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I wanted to make this video because I've gotten the same question from a lot of subscribers, a lot of Be Better Golfers. Uh, I've gotten this question many times, probably from 50 different people, either through direct messages, Instagram messages, or um, comments in uh, YouTube videos. But I've gotten the question so many times that I think it is it deserves it definitely deserves a full answer so this video is gonna be this video is gonna be all talking but I think it's going to be an important video for be better golf and interesting to a lot of you guys because um, how much this question comes up so one of the uh, uh, the question is basically this you've seen so many instructors in the last year how do you keep from all the different all the different ideas and all the different swing methods uh, from making you go completely insane that's one version of the question and the other version of the question naturally is hey you've seen all these in different instructors who's the best or who are you following and it's a difficult question to answer because uh, I have such great respect for all the different guys who have been on the channel and so much gratitude for them coming on basically be better golf was absolutely nothing it, it didn't exist a year and a half ago and now um, and now it's a little something, uh, growing still, but a little something, you know, really through the uh, generosity of people that have come on the channel to uh, explain their golf philosophies and help me and uh, everybody watching get better. So I, but it's so difficult to make this video and not, and tell you the things that I like and the things that I don't like without sounding like I'm coming down on any one instructor. So caveats out of the way and disclaimers out of the way this is uh, basically the answer so I in the last year I've seen probably 13 or 15 different instructors somewhere around there and I've had about 50 or more golf lessons and uh, a lot of these golf lessons are not just like your normal garden variety one hour golf lesson you know some of these I've I've spent up to nine ten hours in a day with uh, certain instructors and uh, it's been amazing it's been really cool and I'd look to continue doing stuff like that but uh, of all the different philosophies when it comes down to okay does this drive make you crazy on the golf course all these different uh, swing thoughts and yeah it does I'm not immune to that for sure so I've decided that the best thing in order for me to, to get better at golf and because of my own personal philosophies, I have kind of evolved in this process of how to swing the golf club. The best thing for me to do is to choose one of them, is to choose one method with some, you know, personal personalization and modification, you know, just to make it for myself. But to choose one of the methods, because I think my best chance of getting better at golf is even if I don't pick the absolute perfect method, I think I'll uh, be a lot better to choose one method that's maybe maybe or maybe not a little imperfect but stick with that rather than waffle between uh, various methods trying to be you know to hit the mark like oh I like this part of this guy's thing and that part of that guy's thing I'm gonna do a backswing like him and a downswing like him I think it's better just to be streamlined so uh, that said I have picked my method and that is the reactionary golf swing that uh, Tony Lutak teaches in Mississippi Tony uh, it's funny too because I mean as a brand building thing it's interesting because Tony did teach the uh, 2014 World Long Drive Champion Jeff Legg and uh, Jeff in, has some really interesting things to say about the golf swing as well but Tony when I first asked him to put a video on my channel explaining what was it about something about uh, uh, the flamingo drill, I think, and uh, so asking Tony to put a a, a video up uh, for Be Better Golf. I think he had 205 or something like that subscribers, and uh, so definitely like was not like super wide known uh, across the country at that point. So, but the reasons I went with Tony uh, were because in this journey I have seen, in my opinion that 
uh, having your mind in your lower body and having a lot of lower body thoughts does not it's not a it's not a way for me anyway to get better for somebody that has limited time to practice and cannot spend my entire you know I'm not a full-time golfer I'm a full-time you know dad editor producer TV producer and other stuff but um, for me I see much better results out of intentions and things that come from the upper body so that eliminated the GG swing tips method that eliminated the Dana Dalquest method for me I just thinking about the the club head right and the ball are down there so the chain to go from the, the ball to the club head up the shaft to my hands to my brain or wherever to my shoulders down my body and then finally into my lower body so for me to have lower body intentions that are supposed to somehow come up and affect the the golf ball through this chain of events just it seemed it, it was too far away and in doing those drills I just I just never could get them and it and uh, it seemed like a long long rabbit hole of drills and not hitting the right positions and drills again and not doing it the right way and you're just fighting yourself so I wasn't super into that that, that eliminated that then uh, going into some of the, the other things Monty I didn't uh, end up sticking with Monty mainly for the reason that Monty is uh, more he's a uh, has his own playing career that he's thinking about now and um, I changing the channel a little bit I uh, don't want to do as many videos just standing on the range talking about the theory of the golf swing I want to do a lot more vlogs I want to do a lot more competition things like on the course in in the setting of playing golf still talking about the swing and everything and uh, Monty's extremely busy, super well sought after teacher, fantastic at it, does his traveling golf schools and everything that are probably, you know, they're a great value. Um, and he's, but so he's available for like, you know, an hour at a time to do our on the range stuff, but not, not as available, obviously, to be going out to play nine holes or 18 holes. So, uh, and some of the other philosophies uh, with, that I real so some of the the philosophies that really resonated with me with Tony when I went to see him in Mississippi that I didn't really uh, weren't coming through as clearly in his YouTube videos were th just this control of the upper body and the right arm uh, using that to really control it and I got my my swing more in sync faster using Tony's reactionary golf method than anything else. And it just seemed to jive like everything in my whole journey of seeing Malaska and Monty and, and all the guys that I've seen has been taking me towards more and more sync. Me getting my swing more synced up, more synced up. And, uh, th and that th the thing that did it for me is Tony's combination of scientific stuff through the research that he's doing and the research that he's collecting from other uh, sports scientists and other regular scientists throughout the entire world that information that he's getting that's um, validating uh, his reactionary golf method combined with his experience working with uh, PGA Tour pros and long drive champions and things like that uh, and it's just it's a set of drills not really a set of drills it's a set of different feels that you use and it's insanely simple and the the the, the moment I knew that I was going to go with the reactionary golf swing method was when I was talking to Tony and I was looking, f I was not hitting the ball very well at the moment, it was, we were on the driving range or something. And I was looking for some kind of downswing feel, like, oh, should I be feeling this or intending to do this? Or it was some kind of feeling that I was trying to get. And he told me, and a lot of, and other teachers have said this, but uh, he believes it as well and he, and he teaches this way too, that once you're, you've made your backswing and you've made a little bit of transition, the ball's gone. There's no time to make adjustments. We hear about Jack Nicklaus's famous one iron where he felt a little something and he corrected for it. That's, you know, that's a one in a million, you know, he can do that. You know, we don't have that much time or that much ability. So once you've made the backswing a little bit, it's gone. So, so the reactionary golf method and the reason that I'm going with it is it's positional on the way back. It's kind of this 
shut. It's not really shut, but the feeling for me because I fan it. It's this shut feeling on the way back, and it's up to this throwing position, and then you're just here, and I can feel just like I say all green lights. I can feel at the top. I'm just gonna hit it hard, and I can be aggressive. And there's no holding or waiting or anything like that. I can just be up here and just have this freedom in my swing. What did Bobby Jones say? Um, freewheeling. Bobby Jones said, "You want this freewheeling swing, this here, and you're just freewheeling it." Some of Bobby Jones' stuff that that he said is uh, contrary to this, but. Uh, that's the feeling I want on the golf course. I want no fear. I want to be out there just freewheeling it. And uh, I was getting that feeling when I played at a, as a very difficult course, and uh, the best course in Mississippi, Old Waverly, the first day after working with Tony for, admittedly, for like four or five hours. But uh, normally, after a golf lesson, I would be crippled in trying to get this move down, right? But after doing this reactionary golf swing, I shot my best score of the year. I shot three under at a very difficult course. And uh, I was putting amazing. But uh, I did. I, I, I was just hitting the ball where I wanted. And it just felt like I was just reacting to it. So I was sold on it. Then after that, I had always been thinking about uh, maybe eventually teaching lessons or eventually you know, sharing more about my own personal philosophy with you guys, not just kind of like being a condo, a, uh, what would you call it, a platform for other instructors, but also having some of my own things that I wanted to say about the golf swing. Uh, so I was thinking about doing that, but maybe like in the way future, like when I turn 40 in three years, I was thinking about doing that, uh, getting more into uh, doing golf lessons or online golf lessons or something like that uh, for people, because people have asked me, uh, quite a few actually, to do that. I've always said no because I wanted to just be an amateur golfer and be really, you know, my dream was to eventually play in the U.S. Mid-Am. Then, soon after I saw Tony, I got a letter from the USGA, their head of amateur status, the, the top person at amateur status in Far Hills, New Jersey, sent me a letter saying that, uh, hey, if you're going to give your own opinions, I had a video that I did called What I'm Working On, right? So they said, if you're going to give your opinion on how to swing the golf club and you're getting money for that, either directly or indirectly, so this would be indirectly through the ads that were on that video, you know, that video earned maybe $2.71 through the ads through it. If you're going to be doing that and then making money directly or indirectly, and now I'm making some money through uh, to support the channel through things like the source of power and uh, sinking your swing and things like that, you are a professional. Regardless of your skill level, if you're making money for instruction, you're a professional. And your amateur status is in jeopardy if you continue to be a better golf. So basically, I am now a de facto professional. I'm, uh, the law of the land is the USGA, they set the rules, and their rules say that I cannot be playing in amateur tournaments. And it's disappointing, especially because I was looking forward to doing some vlogging from tournaments this summer and everything. But uh, I can understand completely. They put on the best golf tournament in the world, in my opinion, the U.S. Open and the U.S. Amateur as well. Uh, they put on the best golf tournaments in the world, and I really respect their their decision, and uh, they have the right to make their own rules. I'm totally fine with that. It's just accelerated me to be like, okay, be better has to be like, okay, personal. I have to be a lot better. It, it's a little pressure for me to, come on, let's be better at golf. Let's get it going. And I really feel like uh, this reactionary golf thing is, I'm hitting the ball fantastic. I haven't played in a couple weeks because I've been sick. The kids keep bringing things back from school. And uh, I've been sick and haven't played. And uh, the weather is just now good in California, but for the last three weeks, you guess following the news, probably flooding and raining, and, and these courses can't handle that. They've been a mess. So I'm going to start playing a lot more, and uh, Tony and I have talked about it, and with the Be Better Golf School coming up, the one in Indio, the two-day one in Indio, March 11th and 12th, there's one spot left, and then the, the one-day school at Skylinks Golf Course on March 14th, uh, email me if you guys are interested. With those golf schools coming up, I know that people are going to want to be asking me questions during those schools and I'm going to want to answer them honestly and since the golf schools are happening 
I think it's only fair for me to uh, to get a full grasp of the reactionary golf swing and what I want to tell people about the golf swing and just be able to give my full opinion on it and not hold back because I'm trying to save amateur status or something like that. So basically, I'm a professional now. And I'm going to be, I've been talking to Tony about it, I'm going to be the world's first certified reactionary golf teacher. So I'll be, Tony's, you know, created this thing called reactionary golf and I'll be the first certified pro in reactionary golf swing. And it's been going really well. We've been having a lot of conversations about it and a lot of uh, tweaks. I'm really, really good at diagnosing people's problems and telling people how they can get better if their problems are super similar to mine. I have to get better at being able to diagnose people's problems and help them get better if they have a different set of problems. But one of the interesting things about this channel is the comment I get more than anything else is, hey, I have the same problems you have. I have the same problems you have. Because Be Better Golf, this is for, this mainly, our core audience is experienced golfers, golfers who've been doing it a long time that feel like they've plateaued and haven't gotten better. And this issue of sequence and being stuck or out of sequence between upper body and lower body is so, um, it's not completely universal, but it's like, it's like this uh, disease that is spread out to, it seems everybody gets to a certain level and if your sequence is good, you keep getting better and you can be extremely good. And if your sequence is bad, you're kind of retarded back to, to that level and you just will never get any better until you've addressed that issue, it seems. So it just, uh, so I'm really excited about going forward and everything. I just wanted to give you guys some updates to why I didn't pick this teacher or that teacher. Oh, Mike Malaska. The reason I didn't pick the Mike Malaska thing is that I hit the ball absolutely perfectly the first few times I did the Malaska move, you know, kind of over the top from the inside. But uh, then I lost it about an hour after talking to Mike. I spent 10 hours with Mike that day at Superstition Mountain. Then we went out to play and I played horrible, hit a lot of uh, duck hooks and pools and other things and fat shots and uh, we went out to play a few holes and it played terrible and then it took another two hours or three hours on the range and finally I had been there at 7 a.m. finally at something like 6 p.m. I got it back again and in order to get it back again I needed three different downswing feels I needed to take a do the backswing stuff then take a transition that felt like I was making a flop shot where the heel was leading and then go to the pivot point and once out and be very patient to the pivot point and then kind of really release it hard and then finish left and I knew that I, I knew that me personally and a lot of people have had great success with it and super respect Mike he's a fantastic instructor that's why this is hard because I'm not coming down on anybody but for me I knew that if it takes that for me I will not be able to as an adult learner and as a person whose computer gets crowded very easily I will not be able to replicate that on the golf course. So, uh, not, you know, and I didn't want to get into uh, having to really perfect timing. And when I felt this f feeling of freedom, just kind of like this flamingo drill feeling of, it was over for me. I knew for sure I had the method that I was going to stick with. For now, anyway, I mean, maybe it could, maybe it could change. And uh, I'm going to be seeing some other teachers. Phil Mickelson's coach for a long time, Dean Ryman. I'm going to be seeing him this week. But uh, I really don't. I really don't see uh, my philosophy uh, changing in the near future, just because of the uh, the fun feeling of freedom that I have and the no fear feeling. I'm not afraid of snapping it or blocking it. My uh, misses have narrowed, and it's made golf a lot easier. And I'm really looking forward to this summer. So that was a really long video. Thank you for watching this whole thing. Like I said, it's an entire talking video. But, uh, and it's gotten a lot darker here. Hopefully the camera's adjusted since I've uh, been out here. But, um, so thank you for sticking through this video. Thank you for watching these Be Better Golf videos. I really appreciate it. I know you guys love vlogs and I wanna do a lot more vlogs because those are the most fun for me to do as well. But, um, like I said, the weather's been terrible and I've been sick. I'm feeling better, the days are getting longer. We're gonna be doing a lot more vlogs. I also have some PTO that I can use from work uh, to be able to get out on the course. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. 
If you guys are uh, have any questions about any of the stuff I talked about in this video or any clarification on anything, feel free to email me at my email address, which is below. And uh, also, I wanted to let you know about March 14th. Uh, I haven't announced it yet. I'll do an official announcement. So this is only for the people who've been watching this entire 25-minute talk <laughs> or whatever. It's like a TED Talk almost. So uh, March 14th here in Long Beach at beautiful Skylinks Golf Course, uh, we're going to be doing a long drive demo first. And I don't know, that, that, that will be something. That will be a long drive demo and ex explanation of the reactionary golf swing with Tony Lutzak and world long, long drive champion of 2014, Jeff Flagg. We're doing that. Then we'll be taking people who sign up for that day's golf school, which will be like a four or five hour golf school on the back of the range. We'll be doing that. It's going to be super exciting and fun. Uh, everybody will be coming to the back of the range. We'll have the uh, Foresight launch monitor with HMT. And it's really going to be focused on the full swing and the driver. So join us. Uh, send me an email if you're interested, and you'll be put on the list. I'm doing the pricing for it right now. So uh, do that. The final thing, when, as now, now that we're going through announcements, if you're in the Williamsburg, uh, Virginia area or can get there, April 29th, my brother is a veteran and he's a part of this thing called the Williamsburg VFW. And they're having their annual tournament that supports veterans. So uh, I'm going to be flying out there to help my brother put this golf tournament on and try to get people excited for the golf tournament or try to get people to donate to the Williamsburg VFW. So uh, also with this that tournament, I'm super excited to announce Bobby Lopez is going to be there uh, he's going to be playing with us at the tournament. He's going to be putting on a clinic and hanging out with us today. It's going to be a blast. As you guys know, Bobby is super fun to play with. And we'll be shooting some video, a ton of video, actually, at the tournament. So if you're interested in playing in the... It's at Kiskiak, Go Kiskiak Golf Course in Williamsburg. Kiskiak Golf Course in Williamsburg, Virginia. Sorry, there's people watching me around here. Uh, on April 29th. That's going to be super exciting. So... Uh, a lot of different things. Thanks for thanks for sticking with this, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.